We are the heirs of 3,000 years of this great conversation. The Greeks, the Romans, others too, but the Christian voice, the gospel itself, is the single strongest voice running through it. So we're the heirs of this today, and we have many leaders who haven't a clue of what it means to be a custodian, a guardian, to keep alive the flame, to hand on the torch burning brightly. So I think what the C.S. Lewis College is doing is immensely important. And I'm deeply disappointed in many Christian leaders who haven't a clue about where our great civilization comes from. How can they defend our great civilization if they simply don't know what it is? I believe it's fair to say that much of the Christian world has retreated from the public square. It's happened for quite a number of years, at least a hundred or more years. And the view is that the secular world will handle the public square for us. And that means values, it means science, it means law, it means ethics. And that is a great abandonment. Many Christians began to look only at the Bible. The Bible, which was supposed to be a sun enlightening the whole of reality, became a silo that you are memorizing the scriptures but not meditating upon it and not allowing the scriptures to throw light on all of life. We live in a culture in which leadership is more and more being determined by education. If you look at the last two presidents of the United States, his, their cabinets weren't drawn for their undergraduate education from traditional Christian colleges. And many of these great colleges like Harvard and Princeton and Yale and all were started by Christians, started by the church. They've been hijacked by secularism. So where is the place that we can train up shepherds, leaders for the next generation? I do think a lot of people think that Christians are very narrow-minded and they, uh, you know, if you go to a Christian college, you'll just be made more narrow. Well, you can't be made more narrow with a great books curriculum. To go back to the root of education and say, let's look at who are the writers whose work has shaped Western civilization. How have great minds over the centuries wrestled with these questions, which then encourages me to wrestle with something that's much larger than my particular professor, my particular school, his particular orientation. And as I think hard about these larger issues stirred by these great thinkers over all the centuries of writing, um, then I think not only will transcendence develop, but I think I'll be humbled. Because we want these people to be world changers because the world is in desperate need of a different leadership role model. And I really feel strongly that the next great evangelist movement in Christianity is going to be demonstration, not proclamation. And I think the students coming out of C.S. Lewis College are going to be able to people who are going to behave differently with their families, in their communities, in their businesses. And I think that's going to be wonderful for the faith and wonderful for them. The good news is this, Christians know how to educate leaders. We've been doing it for over six, seven hundred years at places like Oxford and Cambridge. The methodology we know, and C.S. Lewis College will be centered around a proven methodology that can produce the kind of people who sit on Supreme Courts, who can join cabinets, and can run Fortune 500 companies. When we heard of the uh, dream for the C.S. Lewis College, uh, we at Hobby Lobby were very excited about being a part of it because we believed in the dream of making a college uh, that would teach in a broad range of disciplines uh, for all of the students that would uh, be attending the college. We live in a very short-term view and we assume that the only goals that have value are goals that we can manage quickly. And if that's the case, I'm not sure if I'd be willing to give any money to the C.S. Lewis College. But maybe that's a mistake to live in a short-term view. Maybe a long-term view really is important. It's the right team. It's a solid team. It's not a fly-by-night team. You know, sometimes we've had Christian colleges founded in the last three or four decades by people who give good speeches and have TV ministries. And then what do we see uh, a few years later? Uh, they're fading away. They don't know academics. Their schools are unstable. And sometimes they can't be saved and they disappear. And the cause of Christ loses uh, a lot of opportunity and money. I've really enjoyed uh, hearing the uh, echoing of what I believe is firm foundation for C.S. Lewis Foundation or other organization of being good stewards, of doing the best possible job 
and doing the best in class, not just because they are a foundation, but best in class worldwide of how to set up, organize, and demonstrate business leadership uh, in a practical way. Well, the key to any college is going to be the administration early on and then eventually the faculty. So you need an administrative team that would be good at picking faculty and would know the right people to pick. Uh, they have to have that deep, we would have said in my day, Rolodex, but now contact list on Google that will enable them to reach out and find the right scholar teachers to make something like C.S. Lewis College work. And obviously in Stan, you have somebody who for decades has been reaching out to every major public intellectual who's also a Christian in the world. Uh, there's nobody probably that has a better contact list than he does. These are people that have had to run a nonprofit, who've had to make something like the Kilns work, uh, an amazing miracle by itself. So there are people that, if they get the means and the opportunity, will be able to build something that can last for several centuries. The C.S. Lewis College, as I understand it, is probably the closest thing to providing me with a sense of hope. The way people live depends on how people think. And until we change the way people think, we're not going to change the way how people live. And the Great Books College, I think, provides a unique opportunity to take the long view of shifting ideology, shifting thought processes, getting people to think about transcendent categories that can influence how we relate, how we live, how we do business, how we do arts, how we do Hollywood, how we do everything. The multiplier effect of the C.S. Lewis College graduates is going to be so big precisely because they are going to be equipped to go out and to do, not to go back into the Christian ghetto, but to go out and to, to do art, to be in government, to be in teaching, to be in science. I, I can't imagine what the effect is going to be, but I think it's going to be amazing.